Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So a little reaper is quite, quite the force to be reckoned with. Uh, use the much longer snake hook. Uh, he shed uh, and therefore didn't really eat last week. Well, I know you're looking, he's looking at me. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm a threat. Um, He's easily offended, <laughs> so um, and you have to move slow and deliberately, otherwise he gets really uh, wound up and can be a very dangerous individual. Come on, you're okay. Oh, hammered it. I promise you, the mouse is dead. Okay, so this is when he's most dangerous because he will, he will follow you out of the cage uh, and try to go right up the hook. So we move very, very slowly until he's engaged uh, with his prey item, which he is. Although he's looking at me like I'm watching you, dude. Stay away from me. Okay, so you can probably approach. You know, Taipans are basically at this age on crack. Um, they're a they're just uh, looking for a fight anywhere, everywhere they go. Um, you know, despite the fact that we haven't done anything to provoke, uh, you know, him vigorously defending himself, he still does. Uh, uh, you know, we can just look in on him through the glass and he can be sitting in the back of the cage and all of a sudden you see his lips moving and his respiration picking up and the next thing you know he's bouncing off the glass um, and you've really done nothing to provoke it. So while he's working on that Provide some additional sustenance. So you can be happy for the next week. And later or tomorrow, I'll attempt to get his shedding out when he's uh, in his trap box. Uh, and I can change his water dish and fill it. You know, dude. I'm not going to even bother to try to remove that piece of substrate because uh, you're not going to like me poking around your mouth with, uh, with a pair of tongs. Um, uh, you know, in the wild they ingest substrate all the time. Uh, over the many years of snake keeping, uh, I've had only one incident where I had a piece of uh, substrate cause a problem. It was actually in a very young uh, Chinese red spot pit viper. Uh, it got lodged uh, down its intestine, uh, you know, vertically. And fortunately, the snake was shorter than my 
uh, grabbers here, my medical endoscopes, uh, tongs that people ask me about all the time. Uh, so I just inserted this uh, down its gullet, grabbed the stick by one end and gently pulled it out and it was not an issue. Uh, that's the only time. Oh, by the way, don't ask me where I got these because uh, I haven't seen them. I got them at sort of a, a tag sale in town. Um, they're used medical endoscopy tools, so they were sort of surplused or tossed out from the ho a hospital and somebody grabbed them. And you can look for them. The only place to find them are in a surgical supply house catalog and they're probably not going to sell to you because you're not a doctor or a vet. Um, here's your food, dude. Yeah. yeah, I see you uh, with your lips parting and foul and come on. Oh, there you go. Okay, that was nice. It doesn't often take off the tongs because he trusts no one. Um, but that's a good survival uh, uh, technique uh, for anybody to think about is not trusting anyone. Uh, uh, certainly in the wild you would not trust any animal that's bigger than you because it can it can suddenly hurt, suddenly hurt you. So, uh, back to the endoscopy tools. Um, uh, if you actually found a place that had them and was willing to sell them, they would probably cost you thousands of dollars, not the five dollars each I got them at at the at the yard sale. All right, so I'm going to shut the door very slowly and gently is not to um, wind him up and we're going to go about our business and he can figure out that there's another mouse in there for him to eat. Well, I see that uh, piece of substrate is is not uh, not going to stop him from go ahead and eating uh, his third uh, hopper. He's not even reacting badly to the camera being this close. Normally, he's completely freaked out. But that. You know, freaked out seems to be his default setting. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Uh, again, although there, we do nothing to promote that. Uh, it got so bad at one point, we actually had blue towels in front of his windows because every time we walked past his cage, he was pinging off the glass trying to bite our heads as we went by. Uh, which would be a very bad place to get bit because you couldn't put a pressure immobilization bandage on your head. Um, <laughs> and the venom would uh, get into your bloodstream really quick because your face and head uh, have a very good blood supply. Uh, so down the hatch with number three. I'm not power feeding him in any way shape or form I think for a high metabolism growing snake uh, I think three hoppers uh, a week is 
more than plenty. His parents get one small to medium rat a week. Uh, and actually the male uh, I give less to, the female gets, uh, uh, gets a little larger uh, rat because they're, well, she was reproductively active uh, a while back and I'm, I'm still trying to get her uh, uh, weight sort of standardized and up back up to speed. The male is fully filled out and he doesn't need a whole lot of food. Well, dude, that's it. It's time for you to go uh, into a food coma so I can grab your shedding and change your water and your water dish and stuff. Is that tasty, huh? You can see the large breaths he's taking uh, and just how uh, coiled like a tightly wung, rung spring, uh, he is ready for action at a moment's notice. He's also probably interested in more, but that's all he gets. Oop, oh, you moved. Yep. Got his attention. Uh, yeah, and that's sort of the attention you don't necessarily want. <laughs> I can see why people in native Papua New Guinea, where these are found, are quite often bitten by these guys because it's not like a death adder where you have to step on it. These things, if you step within probably three feet of it and it feels cornered, it's coming at you. Uh, an adult taipan, on other hands, you would really have to step on it or disturb it. It would probably go in the other direction. Uh, youngsters feel that the be best defense is a good offense. Well, this is uh, Little Reaper. Um, we also call him Mr. Mouthy now because you know, Taipans have this, uh, uh, you know, habit of moving their lower lips uh, to show displeasure uh, or sort of as a threat, like, you know, I'm getting ready to bite you. Um, we need to move his cage to some place where there's less, less traffic because when we come in and out of the room, uh, he takes it upon himself to try to kill us through the glass. Uh, it's very disturbing when you're not expecting it and you hear this thump uh, next to your ear. Um, so, you know, a lot of times I have his front of his cage covered, so uh, he is, uh, he doesn't really see what's going on in the room. He's uh, a very high-strung individual for sure. Um, since we're going in and out, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do, is I'm going to, uh, to cover the front of his cage. So he is uh, a little less able to see us going in and out. And I'm always knocking something over. <laughs> And this way, you know, he's a little bit more relaxed. And we're not having him have a conflagration in our ear. And it can startle you when you're not expecting it. Mm. A matter of fact, uh, here in the room, it's, or any of the room, whenever you're working outside a cage, uh, it is quite common to hear a thud and then look over and you see venom streaming down the glass. <laughs> uh, Pink did that yesterday when we were working over in that area. Are you looking for something to eat? Huh? 
Were you just sniffle? Huh? You were just sniffling. You were just sniffling, huh? but you're not. Oh, you are gonna sort of sniffle now, huh? And your arm, of course, was in the way. Okay. Hi. Would you like something to eat? Huh? We're serving up some nice tricks today. Huh? So always very delicate. Oh, we're excited. It's always very challenging where you can present it where they're not going to hurt their face. I know it's not a rat. Are you interested in that, huh? What the heck is that? Yeah, I'm also trying to keep my arm at a rate. Yes, yes. Are we weirded out by the camera? Huh? Mr. Pointy Nose is not. <laughs> Are you expecting a rat? Huh? Yeah, look at her. Ew. Get that thing away from me. What is it? Hmm. You lost your chance. Oh. oh, missed. Now, on top of being disgusted, she's embarrassed. Hmm. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. There we go. Come over here to this angle. There, you can see her nicely. And Mr. Pointy Nose says, hurry up. My turn mine. next. <laughs> Forget the rhino viper. I'm cooler looking. <laughs> there you go, girly. Huh? Are you happy now? All right. Well, we'll uh, shut that. So we only have one dangerous missile uh, loose in the room at a time. I'm Mr. Pointy Nose. I know. I see you. I uh, why, don't you why don't you come back ar around? Denikistradon are the Bothrops of that part of the world and can be very, very tricky to work with. Now, this is something that I've noticed. If it's avian prey, they strike and hold a lot of the snakes. Rodent prey, it's usually strike and release because they know that the rodents have big nasty teeth if it gets embedded in their head or their spine, they're done for. So they really respect their prey by, you know, strike release. Birds they know can fly away some distance before the venom takes hold. Now, I don't know if that, <laughs> I don't know if that's the case with the Denichistrodon because they're known as the, you know, the hundred pace snake where a bite victim walks uh, as little as 100 paces and falls over. They, like their South American brethren, they have very powerful vasodilators which dilate your blood vessels and drop your blood pressure through the floorboards. Now, if it can do that to a human, a small prey animal, once those vasodilators take, play, uh, take hold, uh, the animal instantly goes into shock, it doesn't perfuse, its heart fails, its brain shuts down, end of story. So that's what I've noticed. They strike and hold avian prey, they release rats and mice in particular.